I'm Tim Ventura from AmericanAntigravity.com, and I'm speaking today with Troy Hurtabies, the Canadian inventor of the Bear Suit, Light Infantry Military Blast Cushion, Fire Paste, Formula 1313, and the Remarkable Angel Light. Well, thanks for joining us today, Troy. I was wondering if you could start out by telling us a little bit about your inventions and how you go about the process of inventing. Well, all inventions up to Angel Light were um, basically... Uh, uh, part and parcel to the um, Ursa series of protective suits. Uh, in the earlier days, back in 86, my college days, when I first started to uh, work on the uh, protective suits to do my uh, grizzly bear research, um, I received many calls from uh, uh, various organizations in the United Nations for uh, landmine extraction and uh, fire departments out of Los Angeles and bomb squads asking if the final prototype of the suits would have applications in these areas. And I really never gave it much thought. I thought, well, yeah, I guess, okay, I'd have to make it bulletproof, and I'd have to make it flame-proof, and so all the innovations, uh, the Excalibur system for blunt trauma and uh, fire paste and the limbic system came from the suits. Um, the angel light, that was straight out of a dream. That was, um, uh, since I was 15, I, uh, I sometimes have dreams that repeat themselves, which is, from what I hear, very, very rare, and um, I had angel light three times, the exact same sequence, the exact same dream, um, what it was, how to build it, what it did, and uh, I finally looked at it and said, okay, fine, I'll build it. So uh, it took me a little over 1,000 hours and uh, about $80,000, and I, uh, I put it together. Well, these are remarkable inventions, and the, the Discovery Channel, for one, ran a special on these inventions on September 15th. You've also had uh, extensive coverage in print and, more recently, national radio. I was just wondering how you're holding up with all the publicity. Has it been uh, good or... or uh Oh, been I've, I've been doing this for 17 years. Uh, I mean, my goodness, uh, I've been <laughs> talking to the media and, and uh, doing my demonstrations with the suits and my uh, grizzly research and uh, the innovations um, for, like I say, 17 years, so the media is not, not any strain on me. Um, it's just been recently, about, uh, I guess, uh, when I first invented Hertzie, which is a, a bulletproof material, um, and I lectured at MIT on it, and uh, during the lecture, I... Uh, basically took a woman's um, makeup pad, a uh, cotton pad that she uses on her face, and I said, uh, uh, any six-month-old child can pull this apart, but if I coat it with the Hertzy formula and press it under a 20-ton press for 24 hours, I could pick a car up with it, with a single uh, woman's makeup pad. Uh, well, they, the MIT paper covered that, and Ripley's, believe it or not, in, in um, St. Augustine, uh, Florida, they got a hold of it and uh, asked me, could we fly you down and put you to the test? So I did. I went down to St. Augustine, Florida, and it was all filmed in that, and they Built, they brought in a big 80-foot crane and got a car and put special vices on it and that and uh, put the woman's makeup pad uh, between the vice and the car and the chains and uh, it picked it up off the ground. And after that, the scientific community has um, uh, taken me a lot more serious. And then, of course, the innovation of fire paste alone was the one that basically sent everybody, uh, uh, you know, looking for me. And uh, I, I went to you know, uh, uh, University of Toronto and uh, I let them uh, have uh, samples of it to test and uh, uh, they basically looked at it and said it's real, it's uh, 20 years ahead of NASA, um, and then my brother being in the military, um, and the, uh, uh, the hundreds of soldiers dying in Iraq needlessly with regards to uh, their Humbers not being protected, I, um, I took it upon myself to uh, invent Limbic, and of course I invited the world's media and the, the politicians, and um, uh, the United, uh, or um, Canada brought in a um, representative from the Defense Department, Discovery Channel was there, I brought in the sharpshooters from uh, Vietnam, um, just bomb experts, and we went at the bags and uh, proved that, yeah, you know, it's the lightest on the market, cheapest on the market, and it could save lives. So, uh, but not a lot of attention. Uh, I mean, you know, lots of attention from the media, lots of attention from the scientific community, um, lots of attention from the public, but uh, not a call. The only person that called me, because uh, I invited all diplomats and everybody to actually see the Olympic in, in, uh, uh, in field testing, uh, President Clinton and um, Prince Charles were the only ones to get a hold of me, which was kind of nice, but uh, they don't have the political clout that, you know, uh, a Bush or a Cheney or Rumsfeld or um, uh, McCain or Kerry, any of them, uh, the ones talking about it, you know, oh, we need this, we need this, our poor soldiers, and uh, it just went by the wayside like uh, all the other innovations. Um, the big corporations, the military, the governments, uh, only now. Uh, and, of course, you have to ask yourself the question, why? Well, it has military application, well, so does Limbic. But I guess the key is it is a defense, a national defense security issue. So that's why everybody's calling what Angel Lake. Sure. Well, you know, with a lot of the inventions that, that I've worked on or else covered, 
one of the things I'm finding is the last couple of years have had a real upsurge in uh, publicity and real serious attention from both government and industry for these inventions. So I'm hoping that it's the beginning of kind of a new trend of acceptance for the, the work of independent inventors who just haven't been able to get recognized for a while. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's an old school, right? I mean, a lot of my uh, uh, closest uh, uh, friends are uh, Nobel laureates, and I talk to them at length at times and when I'm stuck on something and that. And, uh, I mean, I get my advice from them, and like they said, you're, it's old school. It always has been. Uh, we have a strict methodology we follow. Yours is ass backwards, but it's the back yard inventors, uh, the Edisons of the world that, that make the great discoveries. Um, you don't have a PhD behind your name, and then that's why you're not uh, taken serious by um, uh, the countries that, that need it. And uh, I still didn't get it, but he explained it the right way. He said, look, Troy, NASA, the Columbia shuttle goes down, everybody dies, it's a huge you know, fiasco, it's a public relations nightmare. Okay, so now they're going to put it back up in the air. A couple of years went by, yada, yada, yada. He says, now the head of NASA stands up and says, we have a new tile system from Lockheed, uh, Lockheed or whatever. Well, everybody goes crazy. Oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Or we have a, um, a new tile system uh, invented by uh, DuPont. Oh, everybody goes nuts, everybody goes nuts. Troy, could you imagine them standing up NASA and saying, we have a new tile system, we're going to send our astronauts in space from Troy Hirschby's. The first question would be, well, who's he? Oh, he's some hick that lives in North Bay and studies bears. It, it, they would never do it, Troy. Even though they know it works. Because you don't have that PhD behind you, it, it, it's just not going to work. So the other question always was, well, why don't you get a university to back you? And I have had many offers from universities, but at least I have very close friends that are great scientists in the field, and they tell me the truth. They say, listen, Troy, you take fire paste into a university, they'll be more than happy, Troy, to work with you. They will be more than happy to patent it, to cover the patent, to manufacture it, but they will take the lion's share. You're looking at 70%, Troy, and the patent will go in your name. Yeah. Well, what yeah. people don't understand is I have to do this all myself. So when you look at Firepaste, as we speak, I am down to owning 1% of it. That's all I got left. Limbic, I own a mere 30% of it because I have to sell the percents off to invest in and, and basically supply my needs for other innovations. So I've sold out everything that I have, and I mean dirt cheap. I mean, you're talking 1000 $2,000 a percent, not a share, an actual percent. Uh, to raise the money to build Angel Light. Angel Light is a thousand hours in the making and eighty thousand dollars. France is the first country to walk in to say, "Look, uh, you know, I mean, if you can do what you say it can, uh, uh, we'd love to come down." So they send some people down. I turn it on. I get the hell out of the room because I'm sick enough. The stuff will kill you, and uh, they go crazy. So they look and they say, "Listen, how much will it take to uh, uh, to put it all back together again and, and give us a boost ratio?" In other words, you can hit seventy thousand feet, but we'd like to be able to hit space. I said it probably cost forty thousand dollars. Bam, right there. $40,000 cash. Okay, do it. Uh, they saw it work. They'd opened up the wall. They, they brought in a special box. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before. It, it looked like it was all mirrored. And um, I said, what's that? And they said, it's just curiosity. Uh, your angel like, can take out anything electronic. I said, yes. Well, we'd like to see what it could do with this. So I guess they were assuming it couldn't get through it. But I told them, guys, even though you got a mirror on it, I know light's not supposed to go through mirrors, but mine goes through mirrors. And, of course, it did, and it took out the electronics. So they went crazy. I, I'm not an idiot. I'm not, I'm not uh, ignorant. I know France could care less that it can see through walls in real time space or pick up stealth technology. They're interested in the fact that it can take out anything electronic. And in that 90% of the world's militaries right now are electronic you're basically finished if you come up against Angel Light. It doesn't matter if they're uh, stealth fighters, it doesn't matter if they're jets, tanks, planes, it doesn't matter if it's satellites, uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Everything runs on electronics. Once it passes through the beam of light, it just simply falls out of the sky. So that's obviously what they want it for. Well, can you, can you explain any of the fundamental physics behind the beam's ability to penetrate... Well, one of yes. the, you know, I had a I had a eminent physicist uh, two days ago call me from Germany, and uh, I'm getting a lot of calls now. And he called and said, uh, uh, "Congratulations!" And he said, um, uh, "You did it, didn't you?" And I knew what I had done, but I wanted to see if he could catch it. And I said, "Well, what would that be, doctor?" He said, uh, "You bugger!" He said, "You fused the light." And I said, "Wow, it's uh, astute observation, doctor." I said, "Yes." He said, "Do you know how you did it?" And I said, "Not really." I said, "I just simply see it in my mind." And I saw this in a dream, and I put it together. And he said, um, you used to be, because he had read my background on that, he said, you used to be in scrap metal. And I said, yeah. He says, well, here's basically what you did. He said, we've always theorized it. He said, if you take aluminum and you melt it and you melt tin and you amalgamate them together, you fuse them together, metals fuse together, what do you get? And I said, you get um, uh, aluminum die cast. He said, exactly. He said, if you took a flashlight that was white light, 
and you took another flashlight that was blue light and you put the beams together, what would you get? I said, absolutely nothing. He said, exactly, because you can't fuse light. He said, you fused light. I said, yes, I did. He said, what, what's it look like when it comes out of it? I said, it's actually unique. I said, it's, it's solid. It looks solid. It looks dense. It looks heavy. So basically, I've taken all the spectrums of light. You, you've got uh, laser in there. You've got black light, blue light, fluorescent light. You've got white light, all these things. You're mixing them with inert gases. You're, you're, they're under pressure in chambers. You're using electromagnetism. Uh, you're using uh, open electricity uh, and, and pure oxygen, which, see, science doesn't go that way. See, when a lawyer talks to me, he says, see, Trey, we wouldn't do that because that's dangerous. That would blow up. You can't take pure oxygen out of an acetylene tank, you know, oxygen. He said, if you, you've got open um, um, uh, electricity inside there. I said, yeah. He said, that, that should blow up. I said, yeah, but the way I saw it in my mind, if I did it this way, it wouldn't blow up and it works. He said, you see, we wouldn't take that step because we know that's very dangerous. Why would you do that? I said, well, exactly. I'm not a scientist. So I do it and it works. And then, of course, you've got, Oh my goodness, I must have, I have enough lenses, uh, binocular lenses and special telescopic lenses. I, I, could, I could watch an astronaut in space shaving. I mean, you know, you've got all that in there, uh, and you've got an array of other things. It's actually five units. You're looking at 14 feet, a quarter of a ton in weight. And uh, it literally, I guess the, the physicist out of Germany said, but you see the most amazing thing, Troy, is you're running it off of 120 volts off a house. I said, yeah. He said, you don't get the... the you, you can't comprehend what you did. You said, if you take a look at a normal laser, Troy, just a laser laser that doesn't do anything yours does, the power it takes to generate the laser, he said, is extraordinary. You're simply plugging it into a wall. I said, exactly. That's no problem. But I said, you've got, you've got microwaves in there, and that's where all these little things came from. You see, I, in my dream, I saw that it looked through walls in real time space. I didn't know it could pick up stealth technology. That was associates of mine from uh, scientists who called and said, you know, uh, uh, what are you working on? And I would tell them, and they'd say, well, you know, if you're able to do that, you're working with microwaves. And I said, yeah. Well, he says, you're also, it's basically radar, Troy. I said, okay, see, I don't understand that. They said, listen, could you do a test for us? So I did the test they uh, instructed me to do, and uh, uh, it picks up stealth technology. By accident, I only learned that it can take it on anything electronic because the vehicle, the little, you know, those, they're like uh, four or $500 remote vehicles. They run electronics. Well, I, I had it on a 60-foot sled, and as it's coming on at you at, uh, you know, eight, nine miles an hour, the radar gun picks it up. Well, then you put the stealth technology on it, and, of course, the radar gun can't pick it up. So then I would put angel light on it, and, of course, the car would move. So I thought the car was just broken. So back to Radio Shack, I would go. i give them the car, and they give me another one. Well, the same thing would happen again. It was only by the third time I thought, you know what's happening, eh? The light's killing the electronics. So I called the uh, uh, scientists back, and they said, you, uh, you got to be kidding me. So they said, okay, try this, TVs, uh, 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 anything electronic. And then they said, go buy a plane. I had to go buy one of these freaking remote control planes, like $1,800. We brought it out in the field. Uh, we had the flyer. It was about 200 feet in the air, and it was doing the uh, loop-de-loops. And then we turned the angel light on, and as soon as it passed through the beam of light, it just simply fell out of the sky. But there's no... Uh, um, uh, there's no scarring, there's no uh, fires, there's no fusion uh, of the electronics. It just completely zaps it right of the sky. Well, so this really uses photons then, right? These these are uh, photons that the beam is composed of. They're just fused together. Yeah, do you know what the wavelength yeah, is? Can, yeah, because I've, I've got plasma rods. I'm using also plasma rods. I, got, I have no idea. I have no credentials whatsoever. I'm a bare behavioral specialist. I'm a natural resources technologist. I'm an environmentalist. That's what I study. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I have no idea what I did. I just see it in my mind, and I do it, and it's up to the scientific world, like Firebase. They couldn't believe what it is. It, it, it doesn't make sense, Troy. I mean, we brought it to U of T. Discovery Channel was right there, and they brought it through five of their their top machines. Some of these machines were $6 million a machine. And these machines are, are able to tell you, it doesn't matter what it is. Once we crush it up and we powderize it and do all that kind of stuff like that, this machine is going to spit out exactly a breakdown of 100%, 2% calcium, 3% this, 2 8 of this, da 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 da. Mine punched out, it came out 79.5%. Uh, uh, well, they were stunned because it's, it's, it can't read 20% of it. They have no idea what's in there. I said, well, I told you wouldn't be able to know what's in there. You have no idea. Well, I said, I can tell you right now, I can go to a local hardware store and I can buy fire paste. Yeah, speaking now speaking of the fire paste. Now, do you sell samples for that at all? Because I, you know, I, I had a couple of inquiries for people who'd like to test it. Um, these are actually can, you know more on the university government level. And uh, oh yeah, yeah. But no, we don't. Uh, I have no control over it anymore. 
guy lost control and, and basically sold it outright. Some guy's got it out of Toronto. I don't know what the hell he's doing it. Selling it to 3M or some bloody thing like that. Oh, okay, okay. Well, so yeah. That'll be out in the market along with the Linda. I don't have control of them anymore. I oh. mean, you know, I, I don't... Money's not a big deal to me. I mean, France gives me the $50 million or... Uh, promising to buy this. I'll take a million buy my house that I'm still living in right now. I mean, it's only a $110,000 home. I need no mansion, I can tell you that. Buy my pickup truck and build me a proper lab. The rest will go to the food banks across the Canada. I mean, sure, you know, sure. money money is no big deal to me. All I want is a proper lab. Oh, yeah, no, the inquiries I had, they were saying, yeah, we'd like to test some of this fire pace, you know, is is Troy willing to part with any of it just to see if it works? And I, I said, Done it a hundred times, a hundred times, oh my God, blow torches between the eyes, Discovery Channel, on the helmet, I brought it to U of T, I brought it to the uh, biggest fire department in uh, Ontario, Canada, uh, they've all done it, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know how many times science said uh, that it's impossible, Troy, you can't eliminate the cross transfer of heat, uh, you're, you're, you're saying to us that a mere half inch of this, a half inch of this stuff can handle direct contact of 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit heat for 15 solid minutes, and the cross transfer of heat on the other side will only raise 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I said, that's correct. They said, that it is a scientific impossibility. I've done it 100 times in front of the scientific community, in front of the uh, scientific media. Discovery, Discovery Channel brought their own torches. What, are you kidding me? They yeah. brought their own torches. Yeah. They brought their own scales. Because I said it's three times as strong as NASA's tile system. It's 45% lighter, and it's 98% cheaper. Well, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Discovery Channel came up with all the equipment, the whole nine yards, microscopes, did the whole test, and yes, it's proven. There you go. Well, but did, no did, calls from NASA. Did you ever hear about Starlight in the 1990s? Yeah. It, it reminded me of that when you started yes, describing studied, it. Yes, studied, studied it well. And uh, funny how you never hear that guy anymore. Yeah, uh, Maurice Ward, who was... That's I right, and that went all the way to NASA. NASA did the tests, and uh, you never hear. So they either bought them out and said, basically, shut up and go away, or they basically uh, uh, knocked them off and... Uh, uh, Stolen. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, my phone's bu uh, uh, bugged right now. That's mm. a fact. I have military connections to the yin yang. I have special units come in and do my whole lab, and we find bugs all the time. This phone is tapped. They said, Troy, your, your, your phone's been tapped for, for two years. I get back from MIT, I've been followed for six months. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, totally ignorant of uh, NSA and stuff like that. I'm not an idiot stick. I know I got a file a half a foot thick with the FBI. I'm not stupid. Uh, you know, but well, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm, I, I've offered it to the United States, all my innovations. They don't give a shit. I've offered it to Canada. They don't give a shit. So now all of a sudden everybody cares because I'm going to France. Well, you know what? I'm a Canadian, and if I so wish, I can sell this to Cuba. We don't have embargoes like the United States of America does. I could sell it to North Korea if I like. But I'm not going to. I'm selling it to France. I'm French. I got nothing wrong with French. There, you, you take it. They're the first to call. I'm a man of honor. They were the first ones to call, the first ones to take me serious, the first one to put up the money. They get angel light. Oh, well, too bad for America. Sure. Well, you know, and the, and the French are doing some remarkable science work also, so this probably ties in with a lot of their R&D efforts over there. So. Yeah. I know I've had a lot of calls and uh, uh, from you know worried uh, professionals that say you know you got to watch yourself, Troy, and you know I mean they'll they'll steal it before they'll buy it off you and you know stuff like this and well you know what I mean I've lived half my life in the Rockies I mean I could care less I've seen things and done things that I mean what a couple of guys in suits big deal I mean you know you got to steal it steal it I could care less well you know I mean, the, it's just an innovation to me I I think one of the big realizations that a lot of the organizational level groups are starting to to make is that. When you separate the invention from the inventor, you inherently lose something. So even if they, you know, even if they had a perfect plan for it, they would walk away with much less than you have just by having built it. So, so I, you know, I, I think the the old days of people stealing inventions and running away with them are coming to a close because I think they're starting to realize that the inventor is. Uh, um, uh, what do they call it? National security issue. Like this is so big. I mean, I've gotten calls and I go, oh my God, it's unbelievable. I mean big high government people and I know I'm not stupid well here's an example I'm just it's just an example so people can understand it because I'm, I'm also a, a historian uh, in war and I could get into a hundred different things and people wouldn't understand it take Palestine and and take Israel okay Palestine's got the slingshots Israel's got the big mighty army if Palestine not that I'm going to give it to them so people don't email me go nuts I'm just giving you examples so you can comprehend what what people are saying about Angel Light. Yeah, just if as an example. If they bought Angel Light, they would be the big boys in the block. Israel could do nothing to them. Send your planes, because they'll just all fall out of the sky. Send your tanks, because they'll just all stop right there. And if we shine it on anybody, we can kill whole divisions. That's the problem with it. That's why I don't invent things to kill people. And if you're exposed to Angel Light for more than five minutes, it'll kill you. 
Simple as that. Hold the visions. You put an aperture of a mile in diameter on this, which is not hard to do, and you shine it on a whole division. I'm talking 20, 30,000 frickin' Marines, and within five minutes, they're done to finish. They're all gone. Yeah. Well, but on the flip side, this could be the basis of a new technology for, you know, who knows how many applications, you know, space flight. Well, see, that's and... the paradox. Get the hide effect out. I lose, and also do. We we basically discovered out of accident. If you take a negative, which the light is, its light is a negative, and you put the positive, which a human being is, you get a negative. It'll kill you. But if you take an aquarium, you seal it off, put a rat inside of it, hook up a hose through the glass to a muffler system, and pump in straight carbon monoxide, the rat will die in mere minutes. But do the same thing with another rat, put angel light on it, and he'll live indefinitely. Yeah, I, it. well, I, so, you know... Uh, I w so, I mean, I'm looking as an environmentalist what this can do for the environment. Cars, no more pollution, smokestacks, industry. My God, it, it's unbelievable. We took roses, roses, long stem roses, bought from a, a, a florist. You, they, they give you the rose, we stick it in the vase, half full of water. We don't add anything to it, just like that. Within five days, the rose is dead. Take another rose, put it in the same vase with a half a thing of water, and every five hours, put angel light on it for 30 seconds. It'll live for months. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's the other. I mean, if I get rid of the hide effect, I mean, there's also good uses for it. If, if that's the whole point, who do you trust? I mean, what, I'm sorry, I, I don't trust any military. I surely don't trust the United States military. So anybody that gets it, they might say, well, you know, we only want it for this, we don't want it for that. I know what France is going to do with it. That's my, the whole conundrum. And I told them straight out, even though they put up the money, I told them straight out before anything was, was, was handed over or anything. I said, listen, gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, this is the seventh time I'm going to put it together after taking it apart to try to get the hide effect out. If after three months I turn it on and the hide effect is still there, it is me and only me that decides whether I give it to you or not. If I decide, no, you lose the 40 grand. Told them that straight up front. They said, no problem. Sure. Well, you know, it almost sounds like it makes living organisms more efficient in a way. Maybe you know, it, since since they're able to yeah, but live. not a human. See, the cell structure of a plant is far different from a human being. So, what is it in the plant that actually uses angel light to its benefit? But a human being, it like I've already had tests and everything. My white blood cells shut. It, it's gone. I mean, I've only been exposed maybe three minutes uh, in all the times that I've had it on, and that's just a splashback, and it's killing me literally. I'm down uh, fourteen, eighteen pounds. Uh, I cough blood. Uh, I got hair loss. I mean, it's deadly. Yeah. But if you put yeah. it on plants, it it, it basically uh, they're like reborn. Well, back to the the viewing part of it for a sec. Now, how is it that this can see through a wall to see a license plate, but it doesn't see through the license plate? I I don't understand how it how it looks. Because it sees through the wall. It'll see through the first barrier, I guess. I don't know. I had a uh, an MIT scientist down here in my lab. And that's what he said. You can see through it, it. It depends on the power output. I mean, if if you put it on the ground, the ground opens up, and you can see see like uh, uh, you know thirty feet below the ground. But that's a, that's where it stops, Troy. If if you had more output, more power, I mean, you're basically working in a kitchen. Um, then you could hit uh, two hundred miles. You could hit three hundred miles deep into something. But he says, when you're looking through the garage, but it's not that it doesn't affect nothing. I made the mistake. I don't know. My mind's so screwed up half the time. I'm working 21-hour days. I put the stupid thing on in the garage, in the uh, in my lab. I got a two-foot brick wall. It goes through the brick wall. I forget the wife's car's in the garage. Gone. 1,800 bucks to get the damn electronics fixed on it. Yeah. Oh, so so it'll actually affect things, but it only goes through the first barrier then. Just it goes through the first barrier. Because of, because know, of the, the output, I guess, the power output. I mean, I'm running it off a uh, uh, house electricity. Yeah, yeah. So at the most, I think, isn't that something like 11 kilowatts that you can draw from house main? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what the uh, physicist out of Germany said. He said, my God, Troy, can you imagine if you hook this damn thing up to uh, reactors? Like, I mean, power, real power. I said, exactly. I said, well, I don't have real power. I live in North Bay, buddy. I got a house. I stick it in the plug. That's it. That's what I got to work with. Oh, <laughs> you know, I, I've had the same problem. I've actually had to uh, kind of jack into my dryer vent on occasions or my, you know, my dryer outlet because it's 220 for some experiments. That's right, yeah. So, so yeah. Well, you know, in terms of uh, so, in terms of the theory, then it's really just fusing light. Then there's there's nothing else to it, or is just not not totally. Not from what yet. the guy from Germany says. I'm sure there's a, there's a few other things, but like you said, the mainstay, the brain of it, is your uh, light spectrum uh, fusion array, which I have hooked up to a Walmart microwave. That's basically what it is. And uh, he said you're actually fusing light, yeah. fusing light. Well, That's you, what's allowing you to do the things you're doing. You know, That's the, his theory. 
the long chamber and it almost looks like a big lazing tube yeah that's uh that uh, has nothing to do with angel light that is what france paid for that's my booster that's oh, my plasma okay. booster so they can hit space they want to see if they can knock satellites out oh so the plasma rods plugged into the the large booster then right Oh, okay. Okay, so the that actual... That just gives me a boost, and then I've got the deflector uh, dish, uh, the other piece there that you see, the, the big glass piece. Uh, that's also has got nothing to do with Angel Light. That just boosts it, because I can hit 70,000 feet on just normal. Uh, it's, 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 the innovation's a two-piece innovation. you got the brain and the heart. Uh, these other pieces, that's basically what France has paid for. They want to know if I can, uh, uh, you can take satellites out. And I said, sure. I mean, you know, i got to get this, 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 and this, and yeah, I can, I can pump it up. To, they, they'd like to get two, 300-mile range out of it. I said, yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it makes a lot of sense. So the actual Angel Light is fairly fairly compact then compared to the booster. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the boosters are nothing compared to Angel Light. Angel Light is, the brain itself is like, holy jeez, yeah, deadly, deadly stuff. Of course, the uh, the heart of it is the, uh, the, the the plasma array, or the fusion array. That's, that's the heart of it. Without that, see, if you turn on the first one, the first unit, that gives birth to Angel Light, but it's immature. It won't do nothing. But as soon as it comes through the uh, fusion array, that's it. I mean, that's deadly stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what allows the the, uh, uh, the walls to open up in real time space. I mean, I didn't understand what I did until one expert called me and said, no, 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 this is what you don't understand, Troy. Jesus, man. The military's got shit that they can see through mountains. But what you don't understand, Troy, they're using like a microwave, and it has to bounce back and feed into a, a, a viewing screen. And it's not it's not real time space, Troy. It's like it's like you know uh, uh, images, stuff like that. You don't need anything. You're you're basically seeing. I said, yeah. Think of a flashlight. Go buy a flashlight at the hardware store. Walk up to a wall. Turn the flashlight onto the wall. Where that beam of light is, you see through it in real time space. Yeah. You actually believe that you can walk through it. I've almost broke my fist twice because you you forget. You're looking through the garage and uh, through the brick wall, and you want to put your hand through it because there's nothing there. But there is there. You'll break your hand on it. Yeah. I mean, when we opened up the ground, we brought it out in the front yard, just <laughs> screwing around me and my brother. <laughs> he said, I want to know if you can see the ground underneath, like the pipes and all the city and the infrastructure and stuff like that. And I said, yeah, sure, okay, boom, we turn it on. Well, my aperture that I had brought in was about uh, uh, maybe three feet in diameter. And my brother actually thought that if he jumped in the hole, he would go all the way down. In other words, he went to put his foot into it. Like, like there's nothing there. But, of course, there's ground. So as he put his foot on it, there's ground. So, mm -hmm. so the 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 actual wall is still there. If you if you tried to run through it, figuring oh there's a porthole, you'd, you'd kill yourself. You'd smash your head against the brick wall. Yeah. So I don't mm -hmm. know the physics involved. I don't know why it's doing. Like I don't know what that is. So what's it doing to the molecules and all this kind of stuff like that? I've had a few scientists call and it's like, buddy, buddy, whoa, 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 pal. I study grizzly bears. I haven't got a clue what the hell you're talking about. I cre I cannot program a VCR. Do you understand that? I couldn't program a VCR to save my life. I said this. I simply see it in my head. I simply see it in my head. It's not. It's not a big. It's not a big reach, guys. I see it in my head. Yes, if you look at Angel Light, you look at the electronics and everything on it. You see, oh my God, man, that's like PhD in physics. Just to turn the damn thing on. I said, yeah, but, but that's not how I see it. No, I can't. I I couldn't put together a a a, a great four kids magnet set with it with a nail in that. But I said when I see it in my mind, especially out of a dream, well. It, my hands just do all the work. I already know what to do. I already know exactly what to do. Sure, sure. But well, I said if you stole the angel light right now, or if the house caught on fire and it was destroyed, then I can't redo it. I don't have schematics. I don't have prints. The only way I can take it apart and put it back together again is because it's in front of me. I know where all the pieces are. But if you took it away from me right now, I couldn't rebuild it. It'd be impossibility. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it almost reminds me of the Searle Effect Generator, where Searle had a dream in the 40s. You know, it was the rings within rings, and kind of like a bearing inside of a bearing. Right. Well, they said Einstein went to bed every night with a notepad beside his bed. Yeah. yeah. Know, it, absolutely. I mean, you know, you, you, the imagination is, is a wonderful world. I mean, maybe that's what I have that most scientists don't. Maybe they have all the technical ability uh, and all the schooling and that, but they got no damn imagination. Well, I mean, shit, man, my whole life's on imagination, so, I mean, you know, I just see it. My suits, all of my suits. I mean, it's the, forget the marvel that, that a 20-ton loader can, can, can drive in fifth gear and push me through a brick wall and nothing happens to me. Forget that. That's not what the engineers go crazy about when they come to my lab. They look at the suit and they say, see, that, that doesn't make sense, Troy. It's completely proportional. And you use no drawings, no schematics, no blueprints. You built the damn thing by eye. I said, yeah, I see it in my mind and I built it. Sure. Well, on that note, we're almost out of time for today, but I sincerely appreciate your, your explanation of the angel light and your inventions. 
And, you know, I, I am definitely going to try and follow up and, and learn a little bit more uh, about Firepace in the future. But uh, thanks again, and have a great day. Oh, I appreciate it. You take it easy.